Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. I'm Steven Silver, character designer and teacher, dedicated to helping you learn about the art industry and living up to your potential. Whippee! All right, so before we get started here today, just a couple of updates. I'm going to be at LA Comic Con, which is coming up on the 11th. I'm going to be doing a panel uh, there as well on design. And I'm going to be, there's going to be a uh, workshop coming up in Irvine, which is on the 19th. So that's coming up pretty quick here. If you're interested, you can go to the link below. That's an all day workshop on mindset, caricature, and character design. So we're going to cover a lot in that. Um, and that's that. So today I wanted to talk about a couple of different things based on some comments from people, different questions. One of them was in regards to finding time for yourself to develop your own brand, your own self, your own intellectual property, your own work outside of working for other people, when you're at a studio job all day, how do you how do you build up that momentum? How do you do something like that? And the other one was in regards to being a digital nomad. Uh, this person had asked about just curious why studios aren't necessarily interested in being hiring just freelancers all the time, and do I think the industry is going to change? So if I remember all that. I'll come, I'll come back to it. But first, I just kind of wanted to address about building your own brand while you're working in the studio. Oftentimes, you will find you're working at the studios. You go in there from what, 10 to 5, 9 to 6, whatever it may be. Yeah, you've had a long day, especially if you're a bored artist or you just have an animator. You got a busy day, you're crammed, you come home at night you got these other ideas of things you want to create, but you just kind of burnt out. I get it. That sort of stuff happens. I was working. I just want to tell you just a brief thing about my experience with that and how I and how I handled it. When I was working at, inside the studios, again, I haven't been inside the studio. I work for the studios freelance, but I haven't been in-house in the studios for about 12, 13 years now. And when I was working on the, the properties, it was, whether it was Kim Possible, Danny Phantom, the, you know, those were some pretty crazy, busy shows working on. But during that time, I was working on my, my own book. I was trying to develop my own thing. I've always been one that believes in entrepreneurship. I had my own business doing caricatures on the side when I was working at Warner Brothers back in 97. I came from my own business of doing caricature events where every weekend I was booked and that was in San Diego. So I had to drive back to San Diego every single weekend to fulfill my obligations of doing these parties. And it was tiring. I got burnt out. It's just part of the nature of the business where you're going to go through these factors. But moving further ahead, when I started to publish my own books and do my own books, this was something where I had to make that commitment for myself. Was I tired? Yes. I was working on Danny Fan. I remember working on Danny Phantom during the day at the studio, coming home at night and having to work on uh, full seasons and episodes of Kim Possible. And that was in season three or season four because I was already at Nickelodeon at that time. On top of that, I was working on publishing my own book. So I was making my own books. And having a kid at the same time. So <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on. Oftentimes, I truly feel, I don't think that I'm a workhorse, a work machine. I don't think I have superhuman powers. I don't think I'm any different than anyone else. The only thing that I feel maybe separates me from a lot of maybe people is just this Discipline. I just have a discipline of just knowing that I'm going to just sit down and grind and I'm not going to make excuses and I'm not going to. This is again, keeping in mind, this was before social media. This was before those distractions. So people can get burnt out and, you know, just from that, that distraction of just looking at other people's stuff and mentally getting burnt out in their mind without even picking up the pencil. 
You haven't even picked up the pencil or the drawer and you're burnt out in your mind because of all this terrific work you've seen and convinced yourself that you're not as good or I'm not going to be able to get to that level. So then you're kind of mentally already giving up as opposed to when you come home from night, you may say that you're physically exhausted, but are you truly physically exhausted or, or are you feeling like, well, I can still go out and I can go to a movie. Otherwise, I'm going to go out and do this and I can go do that and I can do, you know, all these other things that you can do. So is it truly real? Okay, so that's just kind of addressing that aspect of it. Is it real? Is, is it a truly real situation or are you making excuses? You got to dig deep and dive into that and ask yourself, am I just making excuses or I've seen other people do 50 billion things. I just explained what I was doing. Can I do that? I'm pretty young. You know, I don't know your situation, anyone's situation. Are you married? Do you have kids? I don't know what your scenario is, but just dig and dive into that just a little bit. In regards to getting stuff done, one of the things on another side that I would do, because I would have long days, granted, you're going to have those long days, you're going to have those burnout days, you're not going to want to, you're just going to want to sit on the couch and do nothing, and you know what, that is okay, but as you're working on your own brand, and you're trying to develop and draw for yourself and do these things, and you do work at the studio, every day, almost, I won't say every day because I can't remember, but I do remember a large chunk of my time when I would show up at the studio in the morning. Uh, number one, I would do some drawing and reading or anything else when I took the train. So I had the option to take the train to work where that was very fortunate. Not everyone has that where I could do something there. But every time I got into work, you know what I would do? I go grab my coffee. I'm saying hello to my studio mates. I go into my studio and the first thing that I would do is work on my own stuff. Flat out, I'm not going to go into the studio straight away and start working on the stuff that's required. I know myself that I'm going to do my best and I'm going to get what's required of me done. And I never miss the deadline. I will meet every deadline that is given to me. That I know about myself. So I knew I can go in. I got my coffee and for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour. And I would just sit there and I would just work on the things that I wanted to work on, practice. If I wanted to practice something, I would practice that. And that's what I would highly recommend you do before you even start moving into working and burning yourself out working for someone else. Not that you're not grateful for working for someone else, but the reality is when the show's over, they're going to be kicking you out. They're, don't let the door hit you in the arse. Thank you for your service. We're so glad we burnt you out. We don't need you anymore. Now you're getting older. Now you're getting more tired. Now we're just going to replace you and get you. With, this is the sort of stuff that goes on. Okay. So this is why you have to live on an 80-20 rule. You got to do 80% for the company, for the person that's paying you. Do your best. Give them your 80% is a lot. You are giving them your best. You know, you're not, you're going to do what's required, but you got to put 20% for yourself. It is vital. And another thing that I would do is at lunchtime, true for myself, you can choose and anyone that worked with me will testify to this, that I was at lunchtime, I was sketching at lunchtime all the time. If I wasn't sitting in my studio, in the, in the studio space at lunchtime and never left to lunch, and just ate my lunch at my table and was just drawing for myself. When I was at Disney, I would go to the commissary and I had my sketchbook and I was drawing. When I was at Warner Brothers, um, when I was at Sony, I was drawing at lunch. And every and this is the thing that you do, drawing for myself. And this is where you can grab some different friends, different mates. The problem that I had, and I remember distinctly, I remember being at Warner Brothers and going, hey man, you want to go sketch at lunch? People are like, sketch at lunch? What the hell is your problem? I've been drawing all day. Why would I want to go draw more at lunch? All right, suit yourself. But that's what I did. You know, and then I found maybe one or two other people that had the like mind. So what you got to do is start surrounding yourself with like minded people. Even though there's artists in the industry and you're working with artists doesn't mean we're all the same. We're not. Some of us are more driven than others. Some of us want to get better. Some of us want to improve. Some people become complacent and they don't care. There's a lot of complacency. And it's funny. My son 
he works for the uh, with the police department. And he says, when you go down the stairs in the police department, there's a sign on the wall and it says complacency kills. And what that means is complacency kills is when if you become complacent and you feel like you don't need to learn hand to hand combat. You know, if we just learn in, in France, just this crazy maniac w went into the police station with a knife and killed four police officers with a knife. You know, were these guys experts on hand-to-hand -hand combat? Were there hand-to-hand combat training classes? Were there courses that they could have, not saying that they could have, not all this, I'm just saying, this is a real thing, complacency kills. Complacency, when you become so complacent and you just get so comfortable, which is what happens to most studio artists, they get their studio job and they become complacent. And they become complacent and they stop going to figure drawing classes because they got their job. I remember this. I was at, when I was at Warner Brothers, when we had the, all the free life drawing classes and no one showed up. There are three or four of us because they didn't need to until every, until we got all laid off. Everyone showed back up into the life drawing class because they were becoming complacent. So the reality is you should never be complacent. You should always keep working on yourself. Don't make excuses. Find the time you can have it. You can do it during lunchtime, which I recommend, or you can do it before. Don't wait till the end of the day. I think that's a bad move to wait till the end of the day till you come home from work to start saying, okay, now I'm going to work on my dream. You don't work on your dream project. You don't work on your brand. You don't work on your development when you're done after a busy day because you are going to be tired. You are going to be exhausted. So try to find those moments to make it work. And if you're studying, I know a lot of classes are after work. It's the nature of the beast. It's the where people get off at seven o'clock. That's when you got to go in, start taking your online courses. That's when you start taking your private courses, wherever you're showing up. That's something that you got to just be willing to say, where are other places that I need to maybe trim the fat a bit? That may be, because I know that this is vital. If I need to show up to this class on a Wednesday night because this is going to benefit me, I need to be there. My mind, my I got to be present. I, I can, you can make excuses and you can tell yourself you're tired and you're exhausted and then maybe you are, but this is where you got to rise and shine. You got to come through and just say, okay, well, by me putting aside some of these other things that aren't necessarily moving me forward is giving me a little bit more energy, you know, at, at night or finding the time to get your homework assignment and stuff. If you're working in on a, for a school or doing something on the side, you do your homework in the morning, you do your homework at lunchtime, and that's what you need to do. And that's how you start breaking through those barriers, okay? Moving on to the next topic, which was just in regards to being a digital nomad, just working. Why are studios so skeptical a lot of the times working with just freelancers? A lot of the times, Pete, it's a very small industry, this entertainment industry. You got to keep in mind that in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles alone, there where the majority of all the studios are, there are hundreds of artists, thousands of artists that are here and people that are coming through the studio and going out of the studio. But people will always like to work. It's in the nature of the business with any job. I don't care if you're working at Starbucks or anyone else is referrals. If you, if I've worked, if I'm working at Starbucks and I leave Starbucks or maybe I'm working at Starbucks and I got a buddy that's never worked at Starbucks and wants a job. I may tell the manager, hey, my buddy wants a job. They're really great, man. You're going to really love them. That's going to be one up against that other person who that per they have no idea, just a blind application. So a referral is always going to make a big difference. And when you've worked inside the studio system and you exit the studio system, people, you hopefully you've built up enough relationships and contacts and networked enough to where people are going to go. I worked with that guy once and he was great. He was awesome. And I'm going to refer him. So, and studios are more likely to say you, even producers, Hey, I've worked with that guy before. And I know that he does a good job. I know that he's always on time. I know that he meets his deadlines. I don't have to worry so much. And that person's going to have more of an opportunity. So that's why it's always hard to crack the code 
to not to say that it doesn't happen. It does happen where people from the outside will get hired just based on their, their work, where that's what people are discovering. People are coming across their Vimeo accounts. They're coming across their Instagram. They're coming across whatever other forms there are out there. They discover their work and they'll reach out to the artists and give them that opportunity to work. Do I feel that it's going to just increase? Yeah, I do. I do feel that more and more people, because as budgets unfortunately are getting lowered, the studios are just trying to do their best not to have to pay as much. And if they can get away with it, they will. There's extremely talented artists out there and unfortunately are still underpricing themselves. And so they're always going to have to work twice as hard the rest of their lives because they're charging $100 instead of $200 because they don't even believe oftentimes in their own self-worth, otherwise don't even understand how much they should be charging for the jobs that they're doing. And this is, but I think what the studios are going to do and they will is they will start to realize that we don't need everyone in house and there's going to be more skeleton crews. And there always has been for a long time. It's been called what they call skeleton crews, where the skeleton crews are just made up of just maybe four or five artists on a team and everything else is just sent overseas or just sent to another, either given to freelancers or given to another studio overseas, again, just to bring down costs. And this is what's going to happen. Again, we're not, this is, industry isn't going anywhere. I don't want you guys to, uh, to get scared or freaked out about any of this. This industry is just booming, booming, booming. Even in a recession, even in the depression, the Great Depression in America in the 20s, what was needed was entertainment for morale and brought up. It was still a thriving industry. This industry is just getting bigger. All anyone wants anymore is content. That's what this whole world now is just built on. What, especially in this first world, you know, you know, first world problems is we care about laughing. We want to be entertained. We want to, we want to have stuff to buy. These are the problems that we face. Okay. And, um, it's just the way that it is. And so now, what you got to realize is with all these, you know, you got the Peacock Network coming. Again, I've said it a thousand times with Hulu, Amazon, boom, 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 boom. They're all coming. And you know what they need? They need content. And whether it's going to be live action, whether it's going to be animation, it's just going to keep on coming. So what can you do? It's just wherever you live in the world, I don't care whether if you're living in Egypt, in Israel, in Jordan, in Saudi Arabia, in Iran, in, I don't care where you live in this world, you build up your strength in your skill set. You make sure that you build up your, rep, your presentation on your website. You make sure you have an effective website. That's rule number one, start number one. That's where you got to go building your brand. Then you start reaching out to people and you start just hucking it out there, meeting, throwing things out, trying to meet as many people as you can, do what you can, make contacts with people and, and believe in timing. That's always my biggest thing is number one, the three factors are number one, know your narrative. What's your story? What's your picture of your puzzle? What is it you want to even see happen? You want to work in a studio? You want to be a freelance artist? That's the narrative for now. Okay. Number two is you got to take action and a lot of action and do whatever it takes to make, keep moving forward. And number three is just believe in the timing that things don't happen overnight, that it's going to eventually happen for you. And that's what you got to do. But there we are in a world. I've been working freelance digital nomad, if you want to call it that for the last 12, 13 years. All right. It's possible. It's doable. People are doing it all the time. If you're good and you're reliable and you're a man, a woman, person of character, you're going to be okay. If you have bad, if you have a bad attitude, if you take on all these negative connotations in your mind all the time, if you don't believe, if you're just constantly negative, if you're complaining all the time, eh, you don't need, who needs you? I don't, no one needs you. No one needs that sort of person in the world. So try to think of how you can be your best, do your best, be your best. And that's what you have to do in order to succeed in the, um, 
on the home front of working from on your own projects if you're working at a studio and also working as a digital nomad out in this beautiful beautiful planet that we have all right thanks so much for watching Irvine workshop in two weeks LA Comic Con next week hope to see you guys there Memphis workshop if you live near Memphis Tennessee in November take it easy make it a great week and thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you guys. I've been having a blast posting some extra stuff on the side and doing caricatures of you guys. Um, it's been really great. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you guys and make it a great week. Take care. To subscribe to my mailing list and stay updated on future workshops and events, please go to my contact at silvertoons.com and simply hit join mailing list. Until the next time, make it a great week and thank you for listening.